Hey friends, we are in the Hutterant shop, getting ready to do these carbs on this VFR 750. And I made a little short and said, hey, if enough people want me to make this video, I'll make it. And enough people reached out and said, yeah, we, we wanna know what you're talking about. Hey friend, smash that subscribe button. It really helps us out. Also, we have hundreds of videos and playlists on here for you. And then we started adding timestamps. So a lot of the videos you can jump around and get right to the information you want. And then we even start adding captions so you can pick your language. Enjoy the video. Okay, so this video is, what was I talking about in that short? And what we did, just a couple summaries of those shorts is we talked about like, you know, tips for taking things apart where you don't break things or cause damage, right? So we're at the point the carbs are off, you can watch those shorts for those tips on the cables. But before we plug up these intakes, we wanna look down inside there and kind of see what we see. And what we could see is we could see the streaking, right? Okay, that's not, like super alarming at this point or anything, but I just want to talk about that a little bit. You could see that all four carburetors leaked fuel, right? And it basically drip by drip, dripped down into those intake ports. Now you should do that on every vehicle, okay? Because that's going to tell you what the integrity really was of the float needles when it was parked. And they could just fail over time. They get hot, they dry rot, ethanol, a million different reasons, right? So it's it's not shocking that's there, but it's gonna tell you a couple different things that we need to think about, okay? So number one, what we need to think about is the fuel tank on this bike sits up here, but it goes to a fuel pump. That fuel pump, you could tell here, is lower than the carburetors, right? And the fuel line comes up and goes up pretty high above where the bowls would be. So there's a possibility that this fuel pump, the valve that shuts it off when it's sitting could be bad, right? And what I do is I want to go inside that tank and I want to see, and these are all a little bit of guessing because our customers are always on telling us, yeah, I had a full tank of gas when I stored it or didn't, or sometimes they don't remember. But what I want to do is I want to go in here and if I want to see what that fuel level is in that tank and see if it's down. Like I said, there's a chance that that's bypassing there, which might not be good. I might want to consider changing that pump. This is all just at the point of evidence. Um, I use the pump to pump the tank out. So this being wet wouldn't help me right now. Let's say the night before I took and set this down here and made it dry and then set it back up here. And the next day I come back and it's wet. That would tell you that that is leaking, which if this leaks, it's going to keep on pushing fuel. And then the weight of the fuel tank will keep pushing its way with gravity and so it'll come through here it'll go through the pump that's not holding go through here and then it'll push past the carburetors it'll overpower the float needle valves and then it'll get into the engine well next thing we could do is we could take a look at the oil level right let's see is this one got a dipstick or is it a window i think it's a dipstick what's a dipstick right here little dipstick Okay, and what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna look to see if it's like super overfilled. Let me just wipe this off here. Oh, look at that. I'm way overfilled. This is super important because what that tells me is the fuel has leaked past those float needles, it's went through open valves and it's washed down the cylinder and let's say that my work order says do a compression test. If I went and threw a jumper battery right now and cranked that and there was any fuel sitting on top of those pistons, I would hydro lock that motor and I would have a really bad day because I'd bend a connecting rod. So the point of this video is just showing you like all these different clues to go, oh, wait a second, I got to check that. Oh, wait a second, I got to check that. Now, if you've ever seen my video on how to do a compression test, I always recommend pulling all the spark plugs turning the motor over by a hand by usually putting the bike in gear and then like usually I use third or fourth gear and then just turn the back wheel and get it to move around before just cranking on that starter button. Now once you have spark plugs out you can't hydro lock it but you risk the fact that fuel is going to spray everywhere and if you didn't disconnect the ignition system like if you didn't pull the ignition fuse you have the chance of a fire right it's a lot of different things to think about I'm trying to keep you safe many of you might be like me now where you're working in a home garage that can be pretty tight on space and the last thing we need is a fire so these are all things meant to just to help you to get you to think about things so what i really want to do in this case is I got to talk to my customer because he wasn't asking me to change the oil or anything. I usually know that's going to be a common thing. I'll bike that sat for a long time. Then I'm going to come in there and I'm going to find 
the fact that things didn't hold up and that it, it leaked down in there. But I really want to, you know, clean this all up. I'm going to pull the spark plugs, you know, see how everything's, you know, looking there. And then I'm going to recommend a compression test, a spark test, just because those are all things I do. Because I'm going to tell you right now, it doesn't matter if I do a four or $500 carb job and there's no spark, that's not going to help me. Or if I got low compression or anything else, okay? The other thing I've just run into, if you're doing this professionally and you're doing this for other customers, you don't always have all the information you wish. Like sometimes they took it to another shop and they hydro locked it and didn't say anything. And then you end up where they're like, oh yeah, it just needs a carb job. No, it doesn't need a carb job. You know, it could be the customer cranked it over and went, well, I can't get this thing to run. I don't know what's going on. And they hydro locked it. Okay. So it's just really important that you collect all the evidence. You're really smart about, you know, how you go about that. The other thing, and I've got, like I said, more detailed videos on this too, on what you should do anytime you're trying to bring a bike back to life or if you're working with a bike that's unknown. But we want to really address the cooling system that kind of gives us some clues and lets us know what's going on too. And when I pulled this bodywork off, I could see that the reservoir was empty. I've got the cap off, but to tell you the truth, I just haven't went to the point I was going to grab my bore scope so I didn't have to take this fairing off. Well... It's wet, so there must be some fluid in there. It didn't feel like it, though. Yeah, I definitely want to get in there and find out. Take a cable tie or something. You could stick down there and find out, you know, how low this might be. And then the question is where to go, right? If it's not on the ground, I don't find any external leaks. There was, like, a little evidence of a previous spill in the fairing where there was... You know, it, it looked like it was probably just from filling it in the past, but that's another thing. I want to address these things, especially while it's apart. And it's a whole nother reason why when you get done with the whole bike, you never, ever, 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 ever put body work back on until you could check, you know, all these things. My friends, this is just the kind of mindset and what we do to bring a bike back to life that you don't know. This didn't run a day ago and they said, oh, it's running rough or whatever. This is a like, yep, last time I rode it, it ran fine. But who knows what happens with heat, ethanol, and all the other demons out there that make these things tough. Now, you can have a lot of success if you take your time and you think about this process little by little and not cause yourself any problems. Maybe it's hot, watching how to wrench videos. Maybe it's something else, some other resource you have. But take your time, make yourself up a good list. Even if you're a do-it-yourselfer, I recommend that you do work orders and write out. I'm going to flip this over and show the customer's name. But you, you want to write that out and write out your plan and then start to put down like all the things that you notice. You know, these are great times to fix all the little things about a motorcycle too. Like a, a lot of the body work here had the little washer that keeps the you know keeps the bolt in the fairing missing what a great time to go ahead and just swap those out now and it costs you know pennies on the dollar to do so all right my friends i'm gonna get back at it i thought you'd appreciate you know thinking about that whole process from the fuel tank to the pump to the carburetors you know where did it go what happened with it and we had our evidence there is definitely well when i say definitely there's always a chance it was overfilled with oil in the past, but I'm going to say that from our evidence going down the intakes here and our overfilled crankcase, I think we've got fuel in that crankcase and we got a little more work that we need to do to make this right. All right, my friend, as always, make sure and like, share, and subscribe. Make it a great day and keep wrenching. Hey friends, we're super excited to announce that the How to Wrench channel has been approved for memberships. What does that mean for you? What would it look like if you could get member-only content? Many of you have been asking over the last year as we've put out surveys and, and tried to get some feedback that you missed the old deep dive long videos and the, the real explain content. Those are very hard to produce and they're very costly. They take an immense amount of time, especially to make it uh, creative and interactive for you to get that deep understanding. We have a lot of schools, institutions, do-it-yourselfers. I mean, really people from all over the world and over 200 countries are using our content to get a deep understanding to help themselves or to advance in their career. Well, those videos are coming back. That's the kind of content that's going to go in this membership channel because we can offset some of those costs. So that's one, you're going to get the deep dive. Two, you're going to get access to member-only streams and live chats to where you can actually call in 
ask questions and get answers on the spot and have a, a back and forth Q&A session with other members as well. We're super excited about that. And with the member channel, it's gonna really make it more intimate. We're gonna be able to bring that back into more of a community. Instead of all the yahoos out there that are just causing trouble and being idiots. This community has always been about helping each other and getting those answers to the questions we need. You gotta remember, I love YouTube too. When I wanna learn something, it's quite often one of my first goes is to get information or to learn something that I'm trying to do. So we love that we can do this for you as well and we just wanna make this a community that is more attentive. So we wanna be more relationship focused. The other thing is, YouTube does this, I think we're doing the emojis. So if you're a new member, it's gonna be a green one. We kinda of went along the lines of like a training does and certifications, bronze is your entry level, a silver is your middle of the road, and then gold is your you know, top certified. But we added one more. We added a red one just to say, hey, thanks for all the love after you've been here for a while. So for all you that love that kind of stuff, hey, it's there for you. What you're gonna get with this? What you're gonna get is really honestly, in, in my opinion, it's really a way thank you. We've tried really hard over the years to figure out creative ways to not beg, if you will, but to try and encourage and remind people that, hey, I, I got a full-time job. Like I do this and have always done this on my own buck. All these expenses are my own. As I move to this new location, Phoenix, it's really expensive. It costs a lot to be able to do all this, and we really do need your help. Do it really easily. Just say thank you, and get that, you know, like I said, that deeper relationship with us as well to get the answers that you want and you need. So, with that said, I hope this has caught your attention. Look at the options below on the join. You hit that button, it'll tell you what tiers. You can figure out what. We'll start moving forward, making content that's member only. So, working on something that's making you smile, or that you're getting through it, or that's making you. So, we're gonna get back at it. But as always make it a great and keep wrenching.